I just dropped it on the floor. I'm so glad that wasn't made out of glass. Sellers, thanks so much for clicking on today's video. If you're new here, my name is Rachel Strickland. I buy things at a discount most of the time from thrift stores, from yard sales, sometimes estate sales, so on and so forth, and I resell them for a profit online. My aim with this channel is to show you how to do the same thing, be your own boss, and stop clocking into somebody else's dream. So without further ado, we're going to get straight into it today. I am in my office this morning, and if I'm in my office in the morning, that typically means I'm getting out shipments. Occasionally, I do get them out at night. My post office only collects mail one time per day. If you don't have your mail there by 11.30, then forget it. It won't go out until the next day. Um, so if you have a huge sales day, you definitely want to pack up those orders the night before. But in this case, I sold seven items. Uh, one buyer has not paid yet. So I am going to be shipping out six things today, and I will definitely be getting those there on time. Comment below and let me know if you're also in an area that only picks up the mail one time per day or picks up really early in the morning or, you know, in my case, it's almost afternoon. But still, uh, I know some people can get their shipments, you know, 4.30 in the afternoon, 5 o'clock, 8 o'clock, and they still go out the same day. So what a blessing, especially for those of you that are reselling as a side hustle. Let's get straight into it. Today, I'm going to be packing up shipments. I want to show you what's sold before I pack those items up. And then I will take them to the post office. I have a short, very, very short little thrift haul to show you guys. Also, I am going to be drawing the giveaway winner for my 2000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, I am giving away that Sam Edelman bag. Let me show you guys the bag real quick. Okay, guys, let me show you this bag that's being given away today. This is so beautiful. I wish that you could feel the quality of this bag from the screen. This is a Sam Edelman bag in bag. This bag uh, retails for around $178, $200. And the resale value of this bag is $100 all day long. So if if you are a female and you want to carry this bag, it is so fabulous and boho with this fringe. It's gonna be perfect for spring or summer. Um, or if a gentleman wins this bag, then don't worry, the resale value is there. So I am thrilled. They call it bag and bag because there's a bag in here that snaps out. But I am thrilled to offer this to one of my subscribers today. I cannot wait to draw a name. So we're gonna do that in the video. Also, you don't wanna miss it because you need to know if your name is drawn and I'll give you instructions about how to claim this bag. So um, let's get straight into it. Let's get these items pulled and show you guys six things that just sold. All right, guys, perfect timing. While I was picking these orders, the buyer actually paid for the other items. So let's see what's sold. The first item I have is a Cabbage Patch doll. When I store these Cabbage Patches, I have all of her paperwork here and I rubber band it to them so that the paperwork that I photographed in the listing that goes with the doll is sure to make it with that doll and I don't have to sort that later. But she is adorable. She's like a sporty little girl. Her skirt's a little stretched out and I denoted that in the listing, but she has even a pair of Cabbage Patch panties. So she has all this clothing. I have some Cabbage Patch shoes. They're a little sticky. I will probably include with her, just um, I don't need them for anything, so I will include them for the buyer. She has adorable little pigtails. You guys want to know what she sold for though. I paid $4 for her at a friend's yard sale. I picked up, oh, I don't know, at least 10 probably cabbage patches for $4 a piece and they have sold at various prices. She sold for $44 and the buyer paid $9 shipping. So I use a USPS shoebox to ship cabbage patches. Uh, most often I do wrap them up pretty tightly and put them in a bread bag and then set her inside the shoebox and her paperwork will be separate in there. I'll use a little thank you sticker to wrap this up. I always want to make sure if my packages get wet, the materials inside are not going to get wet or mildewed or anything like that. So wrap everything in plastic as much as you can. So that was a pretty good profit. You, you know, if you watch this channel, my aim is always 10 times my money. I'm not interested in doubling my money on most things because I have such a small buy-in cost. She was $4. I always try to keep my buy-in under $5 if I can. The next item that sold, um, I recently did some retail arbitrage at our Walmart. They had an incredible clearance one night. I actually went in there. I don't know, just after some random item and I ended up with an entire cart full of items that had clearanced out to $1. I went in the next day maybe and I found these sunglasses along with some other sunglasses that had also clearanced out to $1. These are Panama Jack. They look like they're bamboo on the side. The Walmart price on these is $14.97 you guys. So 
had to beat Walmart's price. I only paid a dollar. So I sold them for $11.99 with free shipping. It is going to cost me probably around $3 to mail that. So I will not be making 10 times my money, but on retail arbitrage where guys, this is another case where I did not even have to take the listing photo. Let me show you my listing photo. looks like these are headed to Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, I'm in Missouri. So yeah, they're not going to cost much to ship, but here is, can you see that my listing photo is directly off of Walmart's website. Um, here you go. Have this photo. Have this photo. So these were so easy. Three photos. I didn't even, you know, try to overload this with photos. Let me read you the description because some people are super, super worried about their descriptions and thinking that they're not being thorough enough. Let me tell you that buyers don't read descriptions. I, if something is wrong or something is super cool about an item, I will go, uh, you know, to elaborate links in the description. But here's the description for these sunglasses. The title, Panama Jack Men's Bamboo Navy Blue 100% UVA UVB Protection Sunglasses. That was the title. Condition is brand new. Ships fast. God bless. Don't overcomplicate it. Get your items listed, okay? So $11.99 with free shipping on that. Great sale. The next item that sold is another vintage book from our school public library when my son, who is now in ninth grade, was in third grade. His school library had a sale and I went in there and I bought a lot of really cool vintage books for him to read, but also I thought that I would use the pictures for artwork, which is what a lot of people do with vintage children's books if they're not in impeccable condition and you don't want to throw them away. Um, I ended up listing this after how many years of not doing anything with this book. It sold for $6 with free shipping and this one sold via promoted listings. You know I currently have everything in my store promoted at 1% and I have seen an influx in my sales based on that. A lot of people, you know, just assume that you have to promote at some extravagant level, 1% will work you guys. So $6 with free shipping, this will cost $2.85 I'm sure to ship. So it's not going to be a huge profit, but I'll make a couple bucks on this and free up some space in my house. The next item that sold was 100% free to me. You guys have seen my video about um, selling the Husqvarna embroidery machine that was gifted to me that I never learned how to use. And when I sold it, I also sold off all of the accessories that were in a box and there were random scraps of fabric in there as well. Well, one day during quarantine, when um, you couldn't even get out and source and I was sourcing around in my home, I decided people are buying fabric. People are making masks. So I wanted to get this fabric into the hands of someone that would use it. I sold a lot. This has been still listed for a little while. It just sold. I made an offer. I had it at $19.99. This did sell again via promoted listings. Sold for $15 plus $5.60 shipping. And it is four different remnants. Um, that have tea pots and tea kettles and florals. So the, since they were all very similar, I lotted them up together. If someone likes tea fabrics, then they're likely to like all of these. So let me tell you, maybe it would be helpful for you to know how many yards were in here that were actually sold at that price. Okay, it looks like I have um, two pieces at 34 inches by 16 inches, one piece at 14 inch by 44 inch, one piece at 30 inch by 44 inch, and one piece 27 inch by 15 inch, plus a teapot border. So I didn't include the border in that measurement. So it was literally just remnant pieces and one of those patterns obviously has two. So I'll make sure before I send it out that there are five pieces total of fabric in there. $15 guys from some remnants of fabric. You may be walking right past that fabric, just the little remnants at your thrift store. Look in there see if there's any cool vintage fabrics if you see any name brands at the bottom of the fabric you know around like uh, the selvage edge of the fabric sometimes you can find name brands run those comps vintage fabrics sell extremely well sell fabric the next item that sold, I recently showed you guys in a thrift haul video. I will tag that video down below, but that video I was showing you some things I was sourcing from my death pile in the way of vintage items. And look what sold already within the first week, the Swingster shorts. Hey, he kind of, these kind of match my cabbage patch. <sighs> These men's vintage Swingster shorts, I had listed at $39. A buyer offered me $20. I countered at $29. I felt really generous yesterday, I guess. And they countered back at $24. But the thing is, the buyer's paying shipping on these as well. The shipping is $5 on these. Let's weigh these and make sure I didn't mess up on shipping. 
Ah, uh, eight ounces, perfect. So the buyer's paying for shipping. These sold for $24, you guys. And they are Swingster brand. I have sold Swingster brand hats. I have sold Swingster brand shorts now and jackets. So Swingster's a cool vintage brand to pick up. The next item up, you guys, is a pair of metal forks. These are really, really old metal forks. These were in the lot of silverware that I got at auction. I thought they were a black plastic, maybe a celluloid or something at first, but these are actually metal underneath. I did not finish cleaning these. These are like meat carving forks. And let me tell you, these sold all, no, they, these were not promoted listing. These sold for $15 plus $4.95 shipping. I paid $5 for that entire box of silverware. And this is, I think, the fourth or fifth lot that I have sold at between $15 and $20. I am making money off that box of disgusting, nasty silverware. I cleaned this up using the uh, tutorial I have on how to clean silverware. And I will tag that video in the description below as well because it was seconds to clean silverware like this. Obviously, I wasn't worried about, like I could have taken Rust-Oleum or um, I could have taken Brasso or something of this, but the buyer still paid $15 plus $5 shipping. Okay, the item that the buyer just paid for is this vintage Dooney and Burke. Um, it's not really a backpack. It does kind of look like a drawstring backpack, but there's just the one solid strap. This bag is so beautiful. I bought this at a yard sale. I don't really buy a whole lot to resell at yard sales. I want to say she let this go for $3. Let me show you guys where to find the serial number on vintage Dooney and Burke. When you look inside, um, you're, you're looking for that tag. You see that little tag that's living in there? So I'm going to actually move this holder this key holder see where it says Dooney Burke USA and on the other side there's a serial number so this bag I had listed for a while close to 150 maybe uh, 120 it finally ended up listed at $109 and last night I got an offer for 70 bucks I told you I paid three dollars for this well I see that the offer is from someone that lives in DeSoto Texas and after the the last couple weeks that Texas has had I didn't even count her offer she was $40 almost $39 for my list price and agreed to pay shipping I think I charged like nine or ten dollars shipping on this and I um, accepted her offer immediately I wrote her a message and and said after the week Texas has had anything to put a smile on your face so this morning I got a message and she said wow thank you paying now um, so this is just another example of when reselling um, can really be more than just the profit I am happier to get this in her hands at $70 and make someone like I say in Texas smile than I would be to sell it to uh, someone across the street for 80 bucks so I don't know do you ever feel like that about about items that is more than the profit or you take other things into consideration when you're counter offering or deciding to accept someone's offer well I'm gonna get all of these items packaged up and get them off to my post office before the post goes out you guys Okay, I went to the thrift store day before yesterday and I want to show you guys a small haul. A few of these things are for me, but I love to show them to you anyway because I'm sure just like me, you buy stuff for your own house or your own family at the thrift store. So I found this Tennessee Ernie Ford record and it's so funny because like I married a, a very country man from Tennessee and he has a very very new voice and <laughs> maybe I'll have him on a video on here sometime or I'm um, if you go back to the snow video, he's he's talking in there really, really briefly. But anyway, he has a really deep voice and he has been singing 16 tons a lot lately. And so when I saw this Tennessee Ernie Ford, I was so excited, you guys. And I thought um, maybe 16 tons would be on here. It's not. This is actually him singing um, hymns. So I'm excited. I'm excited to hear him sing um, the Old Rugged Cross and uh, which other one on here was I pretty excited about. Um, softly and tenderly so I'll probably put this on tonight to listen to it I paid a dollar for that I bought these for my son my youngest my kids are 4 and 14 and they will both be playing baseball this year and my youngest it's his first year ever can you even with these adorable little cleats look at these these are under armor they are so shiny metallic and it looks like I paid five dollars for these but guys they're brand new. Like these have never been used. I would have picked them up even if they had been used. Um, just because like you don't use cleats very much before, you know, 
the season's over and especially at this age they're not gonna wear them again next year so I always look for cleats in good shape but yeah I'm excited to show him these you guys he is so ready to start sports he gets to run track this year too so anyway I picked these up for five bucks for my son and of course after he's done I'm going to um I'm gonna be able to list them one more thing I got for someone in my family before I go on to the things I bought to resell. My oldest son, who's 14, loves this skateboard and he loves a Volcom brand. That's what this is. And it's a dress shirt. He does not like dress shirts. I can never get him to wear a dress shirt, but I feel like I can get him to wear this dress shirt. Okay, let's go on to the things that I bought to resell. Let me show you. I found this really great shirt. This is a brand that you might not know about. So remember this brand, okay? You see this bright and colorful resort wear, okay? That's a keyword here. And the brand is Trina Turk. If you have not heard of Trina Turk, this is a brand that this was not even marked up. They have um, like the higher name brands are marked with a red dot at this particular place and are $4.50 and the cheaper ones are only $2.50 and it was half off today so I paid $1.25 for this Trina Turk shirt. You can get $50 to $100 for Trina Turk pieces, um, sometimes more. I've sold Trina Turk dresses, Trina Turk swimsuits. It's just a really good brand. So I haven't looked up comps but I'd say maybe between $30 and $40 for just a thin blouse like this. This is super pretty though. I don't know. I might have to try this on. This is... This is a size small, but it looks like it might fit. What do you think? It's really cute. All right, I said I said I was buying these things to resell, right? Focus here. All right, I got another pair of men's coveralls, you guys. This brand, um, these are Red Cap. Can you see that? And these are just basic men's mechanic overalls. So while I'm looking at these, I'm looking at overall condition. Is there a huge staining? Is there holes? Anything like that? Of course, you guys know I'm checking the zippers. It's a beautiful vintage brass zipper here, YKK brand. Um, yeah, these just checked a lot of... Sorry, there's not a better way to show you. These just checked a lot of vintage boxes for me. And these were $4. Yes, absolutely. So I bought these. I got... This shirt, this men's dress shirt, actually, I just noticed these huge deodorant stains underneath this. I wonder if that'll come out. I didn't buy this to resell right away. I'm working on a project, a, a vintage clothing project right now. And um, this is a project that I'm doing with my dad. And I got this pull, uh, pearl snap button men's dress shirt for that project. So this, um, I think I paid like a dollar for this. So really, really a cool men's dress shirt. And it's a very tall, it's a tall man. Hopefully you can see that on there. But I love on vintage dress shirts, I love this western design and the pearl snap buttons. I got this is Ralph Lauren. Beautiful. Look at the colors on this. And this is super, super soft, you guys. This isn't just like a typical um, dress shirt. Let me find a fabric tag here. It says 100% cotton. Um, it almost feels like wool-like. It's really, really soft. So I thought the colors on this were so great. This is a men's size large. So that will be going up in my store for sure. I just love the colors. I have two more things here. This one is a starter Red Wings jersey i'm not positive this is vintage the tag is really cool starter but then it does say down here made in korea um but it is almost you know like the thick tag like you would expect in something that's vintage and is starter even still making jerseys in sports I'm, I'm not really sure do you guys think this is vintage okay i have one more thing and there's like some crowd involvement here okay so i have this would you have picked up this beautiful little Russian nesting doll, um, whatever, whatever you would like to call her. Let me tell you that this does open up and there is another doll inside. This was marked at $1. You can see they so kindly wrote it right on this hand painted vintage Russian nesting doll, but I can get that off of there. I'm not worried. What I want to ask you guys is to pause the video and comment below how many dolls you think are inside this so she is she is about seven inches tall how many dolls do you think are inside comment below real quick you're gonna get 50 fake internet points um whoever gets the closest okay anyone 50 fake internet points all right here's one you think there's another one of course there's another one 
Look at how small this is. There's another one in there. There's another one. Are you counting? There's another. They're so small at this point. At this point, they're so small that they start to look like little um, like summer squashes. There is another doll in here. How many more do you think there are? Oh my goodness. Look how little this is. This is like one inch at this point. Do you think there's another one in there? Oh guys, look how little. This would be like the size of an earring at this point. Do you think there's another doll in here? Ah! I just dropped it on the floor. I'm so glad that wasn't made out of glass. Okay, okay, I got it, don't worry. <laughs> that is where they stopped pricing them at the thrift store and they didn't realize that there was still one more in here. This is like the size of, this is tiny. I don't know what this is the size of, a pencil eraser or something. How many dolls did you guess? There are 10 little Russian nesting dolls in here. These are adorable, but I am not kidding. Do you see that? That says 25. Every single one of these were priced separately. Who does that? Like, I, I love you, thrift store, but why? I had to pay for every single one of these little dolls. Look at this. Separately, but it was still only $4 for the set. The biggest one was a dollar, and then it was like 75 cents, 50 cents, and then the next several were a quarter all the way to the end, I think. So, it ended up being right at $4 for the entire set. And guys, I have looked up some of those hand-painted and vintage can go for hundreds of dollars. Let's follow along and I will update you guys when that thing sells. And without a doubt, I will tell you how much it sells for. Okay, let's get to the part of the video that you're probably here for. And that is the giveaway. All right, when I said that I was going to give this away, I said I would give it away to someone just for being subscribed to the channel. So you didn't have to like a video. You didn't have to comment anything. Do you know how much harder that makes it to give away? <laughs> I didn't realize it. I definitely did want the reward to be just in subscribing though. So... Of the subscribers that I have, here's what we're gonna do. Like, you know, when you comment on a video and they pull out a random comment picker, that doesn't exist pulling out a random subscriber. I thought that it did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use randomnumber.org, I think is the name. I'll, I'll link it down below in the uh, description. So currently I have 2,068 subscribers. That is as of 2.53 Central Time on Wednesday, February 24th, 2021. 2,068 subscribers. So I'll take a screenshot of that real quick. 2068 and I'm going to go to randomnumber.org and I am going to ask it to pick me a random number before my phone goes dead. So let's just let's just find that real quick. Okay, it looks like Google actually has their own random number, but I've just always heard good things about random.org. Random.org is the name of the website. So the minimum is 1 and the maximum we said 2000 68 and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it pick a random number and you guys I have the patience of a distance runner So I'm going to count the subscribers starting from the bottom all the way up until I get to whatever number this thing is about to spit out Okay, that's some patience. It'll be my Zen for the day. All right, let's see from 1 to 2068 you probably can't see that because my phone's trying to die generate oh praise the Lord. Let me tell you how good God is real quick. The number is 2,000 or 202. Whoo! Praise up. All right, 202. I can definitely count to that. I was so worried it was going to be like 1,600 and something. So I am going to go into, um, onto my desktop, pull up my subscribers, and I will, let me screenshot that real quick. 202 is the number, and I will, um, I will pick the 202nd person on that list. And I don't think it's in any particular order as far as like, um, like when the order of which someone subscribed or anything like that. Um, if there is an order and you can just set it random, that's what I'll do. Let's find out who the winner is. All right guys, so this definitely doesn't appear to be in any type of order. Um, 
it has the date folks subscribe 2017 the next one's 2020 2016 2018 2018 2017 uh, there's no rhyme or reason there and then the channels do not appear to be in any type of like alphabetical order or anything like that we have starts with a c starts with a p starts with an a starts with a b starts with a k so i am since these are in absolutely random order i'm going to start at the top and i'm going to count down 202. I actually just noticed something great. This has 10 rows per page. So let's actually, let's go 50 rows per page and we'll get to 200. So here are the first 50. Next page. The next 50, we are at 100. Next page. The next 50, we are at 150. Next page. We are next 50 at 200 now. So at this point, since we are at 200, we will click next page and we will count 20. If you're keeping score at home, it's not hard to see that this is where I messed up. I actually posted this video and it went live talking about the wrong winner. <laughs> some very spectacular reseller friends of mine reached out and pointed out to me that I said the number 202 202 times and here I am counting to 220. No, no, no. One, two. So I was able to slow it down. One, two, three, four. You can see right here, slowing it down, that the last couple um, letters in this person at 202's name is TL and they subscribed on August 9th, 2020. I sorted my subscribers by date that they subscribed. Now you can see there's only one subscriber that subscribed on August 9th, 2020. Thanks guys. And the last two letters are T and L. The rightful winner of this giveaway is RTL. Back in November, well, maybe sometime in October, November, was when I really decided that I was going to jump back into making YouTube videos. Maybe you guys have looked back into some of my videos and noticed I used to make videos years and years ago, but then I just kind of stopped. And I decided last fall to really revitalize this channel. And one of the main contributing factors to me deciding to revitalize this channel was watching a channel that's very important to me as a reseller. Um, and that is Harry Tornado's channel. I w began to really watch his channel while I would list things. And while I would, um, sometimes listening to it, you know, while I'm driving to source or something. And I just thought that he had this infectious positivity that we need more of in this community because it's probably not um, a stretch to try to find a channel that is, you know, causing any type of a drama or, you know, it's not hard to find negativity in this space. But sometimes, as is with any part of the world, it can be hard to find positivity. So when you do find it, you hold on to it. And I thought, you know what? If I want to see more of that in the world, then I need to be more of that in the world. And so um, Josh and his channel over at Harry Tornado really, um, like that was my inspiration of revitalizing this channel and what you guys see today. Every Everything that I do right now is because I want to see more infectious positivity in the world. So it's why I don't bring a whole lot of rants. It's why I don't say a whole lot of negative because I just want to encourage you guys. I want to be in your corner and that is what my channel is really all about. So I couldn't thank you enough that you're here because otherwise I would just be encouraging that wall. And while that might, sit, might sound really cool, it would not be nearly enough, uh, you know, not nearly as cool as hearing you guys say back to me, Rachel, that means something to me, what you said, especially the last video. I really put myself out there and given that motivational talk and for you guys to tell me what it meant to you meant the world to me. So, um, I just thank you so much for being a part of what we're doing over here in 2068 subscribers. Um, 
just really warms up my heart more than what you know when when I hit 2000 yesterday and it was largely due in part to Josh sharing my channel over on his um, his video yesterday I didn't even know he was gonna do that and I got a ping on my phone someone said I came over here from Josh's channel and I was like maybe it was the the older video where we did that collaboration and I hadn't watched his video it had posted like an hour or two prior and in the video um, he talked about my channel and I just think again anyone with that type of infectious positivity because he didn't have he doesn't have anything to gain from trying to promote other people he has a tremendous channel and is still willing to um, while he's at the top of this ladder reach down and help the next person up so Josh that means a ton to me I will comment um, in the descriptions and lead you guys over to his channel if you have been living under a reseller rock and you're not familiar with him yet if you like my channel and you think I'm positive you're gonna love the type of positivity that he puts out so God bless you guys congratulations Mike on winning that bag and um, I will put some information down in the description about how you can get a hold of me probably reaching out to me on Instagram would be the best way and um, give me an address and I will package up that bag and send it to you on Instagram. I am reseller Rachel Strickland. God bless you guys so much. Treat your business like your business.